How's it going, Ecosystem? We are back with the next episode of the White Spaces Show. Our remote segments focus on guests who are located, well, remotely. I myself am also quite remote these days and working on my suntan. Um, I'm sure you can tell. In any case, let's introduce our guest today. He's the Chief Technology Officer at Bellis Network, a technology leader with a background in fintech, commerce, and media domains. He is experienced in building various blockchain applications, cryptography, and containerized infrastructure based on Kubernetes at GCP. And he's also quite experienced in PKI. That's a lot of words which I don't understand, but in any case, please welcome Roman Cherednik. Hi, how's it going? Going very well. Please, Roman, explain to me what does PKI mean, and please treat me like I'm a I'm like I'm a twelve year old at least. Out of all those sophisticated words. Well, okay, let's start with that. Um, so PKI stands for Public Key Infrastructure, and whatever it means, like in simple terms, if you are twelve years old kid, like I would probably explain it with something like. Uh, so this is like a set of rules, uh, software and principles and procedures uh, in order to make uh, digital communication uh, to be secure. Uh, so like in simple terms, like imagine if we talk uh, with each other with SMS or a cell phone network, right? So somehow we trust uh the system that if i send you an sms and you uh, get a message from me and you read it and somehow you you know naturally trust that this comes from me and if you reply to me i do the same on my end so we don't really question all the time like if uh the communication channel was hacked in between and you know like we need to like somehow make sure that we are talking to uh, if I'm talking to Pavel and you talk to Roman, so we don't do uh, that much in our real world, right? So that happens just because we trust our mobile operators. And as a, as a sequence uh, of the trust goes probably to uh, the government. Uh, so we trust that the mobile operators are regulated by the government. And they follow specific uh, rules. So they cannot really... Uh, intervene into private communication and you know you know so, so they follow some specific rules so public key infrastructure probably does the same thing but for uh, the digital world uh, where usually machines communicate to each other or some services so yeah like in this specific context uh, the role of the government uh, plays uh, an entity called certificate authority so this is like a key uh, role within the public key infrastructure so just because we trust that authority like we i mean machines and services that talk to each other uh, they can be uh, like uh, relaxed in terms of the security and make sure and uh, be confident that they talk to uh, the services they intend to talk to. So this is like something that comes from 80s, 90s. Uh, so this is uh, an old and classic term for uh, having a secure communication over the uh, digital channels. Like before uh, blockchain, blockchain came into the game. So that was a quite a popular solution for uh, having a secure communication within the internet environment. I hope not that sure. not answer sure. the questions. Yeah, not sure that a 12 year old me would understand what you just said. And most specifically, I don't think I would understand one word which you started with, which is SMS, because, you know, 12 year olds these days, uh, I think nobody knows what SMS is for and, and how. All right. WhatsApp message. <laughs> so they would trust WhatsApp and their government regulation over WhatsApp as the company. So let, let's take that as an example. Yeah. Cool. Well, thank you so much for explaining it. And let's dig deeper into how you became a CTO, which my understanding is you've been doing for what, four years now with different companies, obviously with Bellis now for the past, what, two, three years. Um, maybe you can explain to our audiences, what does a chief technology officer uh, do? And in your case specifically, what's your day to day? 
Uh, yeah, so like specifically within uh, a startup environment, uh, a, a role of the CTO might be like a little bit broad and wide uh, compared to maybe a corporation or something like that in terms of how many hats you can wear within uh, your role. Uh, like in my case, like if I summarize uh, the stuff that I've been doing like for the for, for the last four years that would be probably something called like uh, being responsible responsible for uh, the overall technology strategy of the company. Uh, I mean, like to make sure the strategy is aligned with the business goals uh, because it's quite a, a challenge to translate sometimes business goals into the technology roadmap and that's uh, the key responsibility of a CTO to make sure those are translated correctly and everyone within the technical department uh, is doing the right thing so yeah also like quite an important essence to that is um, basically when the CTO translates uh, business goals into the technical roadmap is to make sure that the technology serves as a competitive advantage uh, to the company compared like because it's not a vacuum right like there are competitors out there and we need to make sure that we achieve business goals uh, better than the competitors <laughs> so that's also a challenge for the CTO uh, usually uh, yeah and uh, Probably the next important thing for the CTO is to actually gather the talents uh, that would be able to execute the roadmap and uh, uh, build out this uh, advantage uh, compared to the competitors. So uh, like having right people uh, within the team is uh, this uh, as important as having a good CTO in the company so like because a, a CTO alone will not you know do everything so a lot of things will need to be delegated and we need to make sure that those tasks are delegated to uh, good people so yeah um, what else oh, probably like the CTO is like the last uh, uh, barrier for um, something that is like called quality, like whatever company builds, like if we talk about the technology company, whatever we build here, uh, it needs to be of a good quality and uh, CTO is responsible to make sure, uh, for making sure that there are processes in place uh, that guarantee uh, that whatever we ship uh, out there uh, is having a good quality. So people don't uh, run away and actually start loving your products. And yeah, so that's one of the uh, key things, let's say. Um, yeah, and maybe one uh, other thing that I would probably pick uh, for the CTO is um, Actually, we need to make sure that the feedback from the market and the stakeholders of the company is actually getting incorporated back into the roadmap and into the products. So basically, that's uh, the responsibility responsibility of the CTO as well. That's, uh, yeah, that's, well, let's stop here. <laughs> I think that's a perfect segue because I'm super curious to learn what exactly are you guys planning to build. Uh, within the Velas network uh, for the next yeah, five to 10 years? Like what are some of your uh, key tech priorities? Uh, I'm yeah super pumped. I mean, I, we, we spoke to a couple of your colleagues already, but now we're getting to the tech core and I'm super excited about this. Yeah, there is a lot of people in Velas that you could can talk to and get a lot of insights about how technology company operates actually, so. Yeah. So what would just continue to do the same thing. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So what what would you say would be the like how would Velas would look like in the next five to ten years? Well, like probably like for for a typical startup, uh, we usually focus on something that is more near term. Like I mean, like maybe eighty five percent of our focus is dedicated to something that comes like real soon because we need to kind of 
innovate a lot and try things out and see how market reacts. So that's why a lot of the attention is dedicated to something that is going to be soon. Uh, like once we mature a little bit more, then we will start looking into something that is like long term and you know more fundamental. Uh, yeah. So anyway, like answering your question, right now we are like. 85% focusing on something that is going to happen soon and maybe the rest is to go into the long, longer term. Uh, and in, to be specific, uh, like right now, well as uh, like from technology standpoint is uh, quite focused on uh, the blockchain development, like uh, hardcore blockchain development, uh, meaning uh, that we are working on Ethereum virtual machine uh, quite a lot right now. Uh, to make sure that our, our chain is uh, compatible with uh, the Ethereum stack, so all the Ethereum developers can easily start building on our chain. Maybe yeah. like a Solana fork, and Solana, as you may know, is not really uh, compatible with EVM at all, and that's our challenge from the technical standpoint to uh, make it real. Uh, also, we work on... Um, Hard Velas uh, Vault. Uh, Velas account is uh, the technology that would simplify the interaction of regular users with uh, blockchain applications. So right now, um, regular people that, that don't really possess a PhD degree in blockchain, they 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 are really confused uh, while using decentralized applications. So we want to change that, as I said. And Velas account will um, simplify. Uh, the interaction with the decentralized applications. So people would potentially get uh, the same straightforward experience they have right now with decentralized applications. Uh, for example, like right now, when you log into a regular WordPress website or e-commerce website, you don't really uh, do anything complicated. You just put your email and password, or maybe you click login with Google or Facebook or WeChat account, and you're in there. Uh, and afterwards, like when you pay for something, it's also quite a simple process. Either you put a um, credit card number or you use something like PayPal to make it even faster. So at Velas, with Velas account, we wanna potentially deliver the same user experience and enable these decentralized applications in terms of uh, the mass adoption. So they don't really have to teach their audience how to manage private keys, to, you know, ask them to install MetaMask and, uh, you know, start digging into the uh, transaction history and the essence of the blockchain. So regular users, users they don't have to uh, see that, let's say. So that's our goal with Velas account. Very yeah, good. and with, with Velas Vault, uh, this is like a breakthrough technology, like uh, very few companies work in that direction uh, in the world right now. So we are like among the first ones. Uh, so with this technology, developers will be able to um, store the secrets, let's say, like that somehow relates to the public infrastructure that we were talking at the beginning about. Uh, so this technology will uh, let the developers store their secrets, uh, like private keys or other keys uh, in a decentralized environment. And decentralized environment means trustless at the same time. Uh, so this is, didn't really happen in the, in the blockchain industry before. Um, this opens up like, so many uh, use cases uh, that would potentially uh, make our life easier. Uh, for example, with Velas Vault, you will be able, like as you as a developer, you will be able to build uh, decentralized custody solutions. For example, you will be able to uh, receive your Bitcoins like in real Bitcoin network on the address that actually belongs to the Velas network, but not uh, to a person and that Velas network would manage that key uh, for you so you, meaning that you will be able to transact with your bitcoins with other Velas uh, participants uh, 
without actually doing a transaction on the Bitcoin network. So that would happen like real fast, like with low transaction fees. So basically you would get the same user experience that you have with centralized exchange uh, nowadays. Because for example, like right now, if you are on Binance and you send, I don't know, like Bitcoins to some other Binance user, it happens uh, within the Binance system, uh, like instantly without going to the blockchain network at all. So the same experience you will get uh, with Velas uh, network. Uh, so within the Velas wallet, you will be able to transact with other people, like with non-Velas assets, like it, uh, those that assets are on Velas network. Uh, aren't the, 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 like like those are native to the Velas network. So this is gonna change a lot of uh, workflows within the blockchain industry. And it's just just only one example how you can uh, leverage uh, Vault solution that we're gonna uh, present to the world soon. Very cool. But the thing is, you you talked about me as a developer, which I'm not. Uh, but I'm sure there's a bunch of developers. I hope <laughs> listening to to our and, and and watching our show, um, how would you attract developers to actually build on on Velas Network? There's so many different chains out there, um, so many exciting innovations happening, cross chain solutions, you know, off chain, all sorts of different things. So, how would you? What would be your pitch if, let's say, I'm not 12 years old anymore, I'm a developer? Uh, how would you pitch me to build on Velas? Uh, basically, we follow the same strategy uh, as Ethereum guys had at the very beginning. For example, like when they just started to present uh, Ethereum uh, as a solution to the problems, uh, they said like, okay, Bitcoin is great, but Ethereum is going to deliver something that is called like smart contract. And that was a breakthrough um, offer, let's say to the developers community. They, uh, I mean, developers, they saw the potential and they saw the solutions to some problems that exist out there in the world. And uh, that problems were not uh, solved by the Bitcoin solely. So uh, they saw how uh, those problems could be solved with uh, smart contracts on ethereum and that's how ethereum network took off in the popularity so we're gonna do the same at velas uh, we gonna present uh, solutions like velas vault for example which uh, enable uh, developers in the matter that is not was not possible before and just by doing that, we expect a lot of attention from the developers. Uh, so they would come to Velas and uh, solve their, their problems. Uh, and like you said, the cross chain type of the hype is something that we definitely see. And we also um, don't expect ourselves to be like somewhere like, uh, on a side, uh, trying to like absorb all the developers to Velas Network. No, we follow the trend here. We try to be as open as possible. We try to be as uh, interoperable as possible with the other chains. So that's why the first uh, solution that uh, is going to be uh, built on Velas Vault technology is actually the custody solution for uh, Bitcoins and Ethereum. So you could actually build something uh, on Velas network, something that leverages all the other blockchains as well. So that's how we're going to present ourselves different uh, to the existing solutions that uh, we have on the market today. And uh, the other thing besides the core uh, technology innovation is actually the user experience. I believe this is like very important for the mass adoption. And if we successfully present the solution uh, uh, to the developers, uh, which they can take and integrate into their applications and deliver um, something that is like very easy to use, straightforward. You, you don't, you know, need to manage your private keys in order to start using uh, decentralized applications that developers would build on top of us. Then it's also a key selling point for Velas Network, uh, which would attract uh, more developers to build on us. So our goal is to have like the same 
user experience uh, possible, uh, which we have right now with decentralized solutions like social media, websites, and things like that. So that's our plan. Awesome. Will I get any grants? If you are a developer and you have uh, cool ideas how you can contribute to the ecosystem, uh, especially if your solution or your tool would leverage the stuff that I mentioned, for sure, let's talk uh, to each other uh, and see how we can uh, leverage the technology that we have and your experience uh, and your ideas. And yeah, let's find the synergy and grants will follow for sure. <laughs> yeah, actually, Savelas uh, has recently announced uh, the uh, 5 million uh, fund uh, dedicated for such uh, things like grants. And we are uh, soon we will actively start uh, you know, engaging with the developers in order to kind of expand the Velocity ecosystem and the grants will serve the, like the, like the gas, you know, like you put gas into the machine and you just start to, you know, run faster, let's call it that way. Yeah, well, thanks so much, um, Roman, and, and best of luck to you on your endeavors. First of all, obviously, uh, making sure that the technology roadmap stays in line with the, with the business one, I'm sure it's very exciting to build things, but at some point, all companies need to make revenue. So I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing some of the products that you guys are building. I know that you're also building layer two uh, stuff. So I'm still rooting for Bit Orbit. I'm, I'm, I, I cannot wait to have my hands on with, with that app whenever it comes out, because uh, we've been talking about it for a few months now. So super pumped about that. But on this note, yeah, thank you so much for coming. And uh, it's always a pleasure to talk the brilliant minds from Eastern Europe. Um, as an Easty myself, uh, I am all about, um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm all about giving a shout out to incredible builders and techies and entrepreneurs from, uh, you know, from the from from Eastern Europe. Um, and I leave you the same way that I always leave you. Please like, comment, and subscribe to our channel. Our mission is to showcase remarkable. Uh, people's stories who work in the innovation space and we grow org organically through your support. And thank you, Roman, again for coming and thank you to our viewers for tuning in. My name is Pavel, um, over and out. And as always, you stay classy, ecosystem. Help.